So Arizona Cardinals, uh, their starters, James Connor. He's had some good one. There we go. Uh, salty. I say that Rams and cards. I know what he was trying to say. Um, James Connor, Keontae Ingram, who again, another longhorn transfer to USC, Corey Clement, who was, should have been the Eagles Super Bowl MVP, you know, back the Nick Foles uh, era, Tyson Williams, Amari Di Mikado. Uh, I know I'm going to mess that up. So, yeah, Arizona's room's not great. Is James Conner a good player? Yes. Their yeah. O-line did get better. Yeah, we talked about that. But, well, Conner had one good season against the 49ers. One good season against the 49ers. We couldn't stop him. <sighs> We could not stop him. But, like, if you look at his numbers, he's, you know, last two years, he hasn't rushed over 800 yards. He had 752 yards rushing in 2021, 782 yards in 2022. But he did have 15 touchdowns in 2021. So, I mean, he finds pay dirt. And a lot of that's having a mobile quarterback. I'm not sure what Kyler being around, what that's going to look like. Yeah, so I'm looking at ESPN's chart, and they have Tyson Williams up there. Now, that wasn't a name I'm not sure you mentioned. Uh, I said his name, but yeah, like, oh, okay, who 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 is he? You know, what I, I don't mean? know. Like, you look at what he he had two snaps last year. Two. I'm I'm trying to find their. Do they they don't have a fullback either? No, uh, no, they don't. They don't. I well, I, I put that out there because we're going to include ours. He's part of the running back. Yeah, system. that fits in the run back room. Yeah. For sure, for sure. All right. Um, there you have it, man. They're the Cardinals. James Conner, former Pro Bowl player. <clears throat> um, and then you look at the rest of the room. Now, it's tough to do running backs because sometimes when you don't know who these running backs are, they pop out with a burst, and all of a sudden, then you're going to know who they are, right? But just going off of James Conner and the rest of the stable there, it's it's meh. That's, kind of like me. Yeah. Uh, Keontae Ingram is a fun player, but still. Um, what's up, Big Papa? Big Dude, Papa never it. softer than. All right. Let's go to the Rams. Lambs. Let's go Rams, to the Rams. You know, they've had a lot of issues with Cam Akers because he demands a trade. They don't. They bench him. They don't play him. They let him start out the, the end of the season. He plays great. Seems like Cam Akers, they stayed with him. And a lot of it's just they didn't have picks, so they couldn't get anybody else. Um, they bring in Sony Michelle back from the dead. Uh, Zach Evans, they drafted in the sixth round. I did like Zach Evans. Kyron Williams, they drafted last year. And Ronnie Dane. Rivers. Yeah. Yep. So, again, not a good group. Cam Akers un, is just un, such a wild card. Unproven group, right? I think I, so. I, I, I don't know. Cam Akers struggled with injuries at the beginning of his career. I feel like they lost. Was it Washington? I feel like they lost that meanness in their run game. Now it's going to be pretty much finesse. Yeah. And Sony Michelle, I don't know what he brings now. He's, I know he's got the experience, but his burst has not been the burst there is for a few gone. years. Was he more of the pass catching running back in new England? That's where I remember <sighs> he, him from. He would. Yeah. He could do everything. He reminds me of a very late in the career. Frank Gore, where it's just like, Ooh. this dude's going to get three yards. You know, three to four yards. He's not like breaking tackles or whatever okay. else. But like I'm saying, Sony Michelle at where he is now is like Frank Gore year 13. Okay. So right. I don't like this group. I don't like this group at all. Now, do they use a fullback in their running back scheme at times? I feel like they line up someone there, but he's not a fullback. <sighs> They'll move around. They'll use their guy, their wide receivers. Yeah, like and sometimes they're tight. Scornick. They'll put Scornick back there. Um, guys like that. Yeah, it's weird. But, you know, Higby sometimes lines up back there, but Bryce Hopkins, Hunter Long, Davis Allen. Davis Allen could be that role. The rookie he out could. of Clemson. He, he could play that back. That, that's but not it's a... just a bad group. Kyron Williams, they were really high on last year. He got injured. So that's a name I'd watch out for. Um Kyron Williams would be the Notre Dame kid from last year, but he okay. was injured all year, so he didn't really. I got 142 snaps, so he, he got some playing time. All right, let's take a trip up to the mountain, the Northwest. Yeah, See. this is a good group. Kenneth Walker, the third, is a day. I mean, could have been rookie of the year. 
if he would have stayed healthy. Uh, you know, you had him and Brees Hall were battling out for rookie of the year. Both got injured. Then they go drafted the second round pick, Zach Charbonnet. It, this is back to back years they had to, that though. the Seattle Seahawks has drafted a top 50 running back. Mm -hmm. Like they're spending capital. Um, DJ they, Dallas still there. They got the fullback, Nick Ballore. Then they go draft another running back, Kenny McIntosh in the seventh, the receiving guy. They doubled down. Yeah, they did. They spend on that running back position. Well, you can kind of see, and we'll talk about this in a second, what Seattle's trying to do. They're trying to copycat a team out in the NFC West. And so when you talk about rooms or stables, um, Kenneth Walker will be their bell cow. Zach Charbonnet would be the running back that's going to be fresh, new, can can spell the one. DJ Dallas is someone that's been there that has the experience, and then you bring in the pass-catching guy, maybe like a third down back or a third and long. You're looking to run a screen, and hopefully you're, you're third and 21, and he gets you 20 yards or a first down. Like That's where Kenny McIntosh comes in. He doesn't have that 40 speed. But he has great hands out of the backfield. Watch yes. him at the Senior Bowl, too, by the way. He was really I good during him. his drills. Yeah, he had a really good Senior Bowl week, too. Kenny McIntosh out of Georgia. I had, like, a fifth-round grade on him. I remember during the draft, I said, the damn Seahawks are using my draft board because they kept taking players that I was really high on. Um, this is And it's funny because Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet are very similar. Very, very similar, similar running styles, body styles, play well, types. They both used to be Big Ten guys. Well, Zach Charbonnet was a Michigan guy, but then, you know, they, they went a different direction. Is he I mean, Michigan State or Michigan? Michigan. Michigan? And you then know, Ken, Kenneth, is, yeah. Kenneth Walker III was Michigan State. I couldn't stand yeah. him that game. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's un, impossible to tackle. They're, 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 they're similar, but they do have their differences. I would say Charbonnet is a little bit higher up when he runs, uh, and I think I think Kenneth Walker has a little bit more elusiveness. But – they're both Big Ten guys. I mean, I know he, I know Charbonnet finished out in UCLA, but yeah, that's where he started in the Big Ten. So it's going to be interesting to see how Seattle uses their running back stable uh, to help their team out. Uh, I don't think yeah. their offensive line is the best, but it's not bad. It's young. You know, which way is it going to go? Because you got two sophomore tackles that struggled late. Was it just the rookie wall like Drake Jackson saw? Are they going to hit their potential and go back to what they did earlier in the year? What's that going to look like? That's what's up. Don't bother me. He says, enjoying the show. Lovely while I'm in the gym. Thanks, John and Wayne. I wish there was a show that came on when I'm in the damn gym. I just, <laughs> you know, I got to watch older stuff or stuff that I missed. But thank you. We appreciate the support. John, take this one, baby. Oh, let's play another game when y'all are finished. Um, no, let, let's do it. Start them, sit them, cut them. Oh, I do not like this. CMC Ooh, this for is, Craig. Do you can't, wh where, where do you come from? All right, let's put some parameters on this. Each player's in their prime. Prime. CMC, Gore, Craig. The <sighs> ultimate talent here is ooh. CMC. CMC is the most talented. He's the most talented. But. Gore's the most dependable. Gore, Gore is the better running back. Yes, out of all these. And Craig... <sighs> he's the I originator. Mean, like he, he, he's, You don't get CMC without Roger Craig. You get what I'm saying? This is impossible. But I, I'm benching Craig. No, I'm cutting Craig. No, yeah. what is the thing? Sit him, start him, empty him, cut him. Yeah, I'm cutting Craig. I'm sorry. I, I'm, 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 going, I'm going Frank Gore as my starter. I'm going. He's just too good for too long, man. He's too good. Like I'm going Gore, then CMC, then Craig, and I hate it. I hate myself, and I hate. Well, I feel dirty. I feel. I dirty. hate myself too, uh, and I'm gonna go take a shower. So I'm I'm gonna go CMC <laughs> because I want the dual threat. Not to say that Gore can't catch passes, because God doggy, he can catch a screen and take it to the house. But I, I I'm gonna go CMC. Uh, and then I'll, I'll, I'll have to bench Gore uh, and then cut Craig. Shit. Whoops. That's appropriate use of that word. Well, uh, I hope we don't lose a bunch of viewers now. Hey, listen, Gore, I, we love you. You know, I love you. John went with you. I, I should have went with you, too. But it's something about CMC. That adds a different dynamic to football. I'm not he's saying he's better right than Frank Gore. Yeah. That CMC's hot right now. There we yeah. go. All right. That was, um, that was my zoo great question. Reference. 
No one's seen Zoolander. But no, it's a terrible question, Damon. You made me question everything <laughs> that I hold sacred, and I don't like it. He's from yeah. the planet Zebulon, too, by the way. Sure as hell is, man. Thank you for the contributions. All right, David, John, you're the man. Let's get to the Niner stable because oh my gosh. I think everybody's excited. They know about the stable, but I don't really think they understand. You got CMC. What you just chose, CMC over Frank Gore and Roger Boy, Craig. Boy, please don't cut that up. I already know that's going to get chopped up and put out there. <laughs> Shit, I'm going to be getting boxing references from Frank Gore in my DMs. Yo, you want to box? There nothing wrong with that. Now, okay. And CMC special in and of itself. We just talked about how ESPN has him number two overall. Oh, there's the pushback. Two one thousand yard rush. There's the pushback. I, I know. I know. I, I know. There's the pushback. I think he only did one. I think he only did one. CMC has one. I, I think, think Gore... both have one. All right. Am I wrong there? Let me. I'm going to find out because this is very. He does important. have multiple. This is why I love Uncle. Bill. I love Catfish. I love Catfish. Like this dude, Roger Craig is incredible, and he is a semifinalist for the Hall of Fame again. Yes, he just had one year of a thousand and thousand. That was 1985. He had a thousand fifty rushing yards and a thousand sixteen receiving yards. But he got them, them, them SBWs though. He sure did, man. He sure did. So three-time Super Bowl champ, four-time Pro Bowl, one All-Pro. Also, only guy to get All-Pro as a running back and fullback. Also, first running back or first player to score three touchdowns in a Super Bowl. Also, first running back to have 100 yards receiving in a Super Bowl, Roger Craig. Shout Roger. out to the great Mark Adams, 49ers Camelot, for that one. I got it memorized. Now. I might, I'm going to go back to Zebulon and get back to this question. <laughs> so let, let, me redo, let me redo this. Real quick. This is fun, man. I, I like I, that Wade stuck here. We could have moved on. Damage control was done. It was and, done. And he's just he's diving right back into it, man. I I, <laughs> I tune into the next show. I'll have a different answer. I have a different response. John, well, 49ers this is stable. A beautiful thing that the Niners have this type of culture and tradition. Those are three Hall of Famers when it's all said and done. Well, CMC needs a couple more years at this level. But, you know, Craig and Gore, they're in the clubhouse. And so they've already put their resume out there. Both are going to be in there eventually. CMC, I, I'm curious. Hold on. I want to look this up. What is Christian McCaffrey? I'm totally. He's probably been a, a Pro Bowl player maybe all his career except for one year. So what, six years? So the Hall of Fame monitor from Pro Football Reference, Christian McCaffrey has a 31.8. And the what average mean? Hall of Fame, 106. He's Man, got a ways to go. Far. Who he's the hell came up with that dang monitor anyway? It's pretty it's pretty well, well, well it's but pretty but awesome. but there's there's certain uh characteristics that boosts it up big time though. So what doesn't Christian McCaffrey have? He's got two Pro Bowls, one all pro. So that's it. No. He's got He's got to get a couple of more all pros, but I tell get you, a ring and get a ring that boosts it up a lot. So that's why Rod. Well, Roger Craig has what two, what rings, three. Yeah, so he should be in the Hall of Fame. It's gonna be tough. Yeah. yeah. So it's hard to get in as a running back. Pause. That's good. All right, let's finish this. All right, uh, let's go. Let's Mama go, Niners. Bruce, he's got a birthday, ladies and gents. We gotta yes. get to it. Niners. Uh, all right, you got CMC. Elite. Then the backups. The Niners were fine going with these this group as their starters last year. Elijah Great. Mitchell, amazing, can't stay healthy. Jordan Mason, I've been telling you from the jump. So has Jacqueline. Um, TDP, they spent a third rounder on last year. Played much better than Trey Sermon did. I hate when people put TDP and Sermon in the same category. You can't. That you can't put lazy. them in the same category. You can't put them in the same category. TDP's got good tape. He's got great tape, and he in came the NFL. In he, and he came in to the season, I would say, in collegiate shape. Yeah. And now he has an opportunity this offseason to get into NFL shape. And I just, there's a video that was put out by uh, one of the, his trainers. And, I mean, I didn't know he cut that well. I don't think anybody knew. When they drafted him, they said he's a big back with little back feet. Right, and but he... That, I, and his breaking tackle ability too, like that, that, that was his thing. It's, it's, I, I, I will say this: when I look at the Forty Nine ers stable, and I know we didn't talk about this for any of the other teams, 
But when you look at Bobby Turner and then you add in Coach Anthony Lynn and then they have their specifics, I feel like they've taken – they they said, Kyle Shanahan, you're no longer able to pick the running backs for this team. <laughs> Joe Williams, you're Shut not. up. You knew where I was going with this. <laughs> I, I, I think they went to Kyle and said, you gave me a job. Stop micromanaging me, son. Yep. Yep. And Kyle said, you know what? I trust you. And in Anthony Lynn's first year, he gets Jordan Mason, which, which Kyle likes Jordan Mason so much that he tried to, he tried to hide him so well this season. But because of injuries, he had to showcase him a tad bit. But he did a great ass job in disguising Jordan Mason, who won't cost the team a bunch of money, who can no. be possibly the best running back out of this stable at some point in his career if he's given the opportunity. He is a running back. Can he catch? I don't know. I don't even care. Like, But he can run the back. Like, that's what he can do. His pass protection is damn good. And he just got to finish his runs. That's it. He runs out of gas. <laughs> like, yeah, he's not a top-end speed guy. He's not a top-end you know speed guy. crazy, Wade? We haven't even mentioned Kyle Juszczyk yet. Facts. Because to me, Kyle Juszczyk is a quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, fullback, and probably can play on the offensive line at some point. Like, he's just the, the utility guy. Offensive weapon, man. He could do it all. And smart as hell. Just amazing dude. Probably one of my favorite press conferences. Whenever he's at the mic, I'm learning. I'm learning. Like, yeah, you feel like you're teacher. being... You're being Harvard educated at that. He's moment. not doing that word salad like, oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Like, no, no, no. He is explaining to you the ins and outs of plays, coaches, conversations, and letting you know what it's like to be in those conversations. Uh, he, he's just such a good dude, man. Um, yeah. And his wife's drop dead gorgeous. So shout out there. Him and Christian McCaffrey. Uh, yeah. they, they're yeah. doing well in life. Now, the undrafted free agent, the next wave, Jack Coletto. Coletto. One of the most prized undrafted free agents. We got him at fullback. You got Kalen LeBourne, Ronald Awat. There's guys there. And there has never been an offseason with a Shanahan coach where the undrafted free agent running back, somebody doesn't pop. One of these guys is going to pop. The way you like, the way you was enamored by Jordan Mason is the way I feel about LeBourne. He's fun, man. He He's explosive. I, I He's explosive. He has that top end speed, which he he just has to get to the gear. He has to get there. And then he has the breaking tackle ability, which is what all these running backs have. I think that's the key to the 49ers running backs group. I don't I'm not I, I, when I look at the running backs, I think Elijah Mitchell might be the worst out of breaking tackles. And he's he looks good. Like he looks like he can he, he can do it. But I think he might be the worst at it. That's a good well, thing, though, because it's not. Well, you remember the Shanahan way used to be speed. I want the fastest four yes. three running backs nonstop. That's just what I want. Most speed, 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 speed. Not anymore. Oh, 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 oh. Before I get to my ooh, Christy Marie, seven months as a member, baby. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, that's why they changed it. You know why? Too many hamstring issues, too many soft tissue injuries. Too much time not playing in football. They said, bump the top end speed. Get me the bumble, stumble, and durable guys that still has quick enough speed. And that's the shift. Yep. Now they, they got to figure out Elijah Mitchell. Elijah Mitchell's so damn good. That's the problem. I was, so I was doing this whole, like, uh, looking through Frank Gore, looking through Roddy Lott and their stats and where they rank all time for the 49ers. Did you know Elijah Mitchell? is the career 49ers leader for most rushing yards per game. Wow. He's, one. he's what, over CMC. He's over Ronnie yeah. Lott. He's oh, like most rushing yards per game. Elijah Mitchell's number one. Wow. You just got to get him to play. Well, you knew Elijah Mitchell was special when the team went with him over any other running back that's been here once Mostert went down. They were like, look, yeah. rookie. You going in. And he was special. And a lot of people don't even realize that he played his rookie year banged up. He it played it banged up and still up almost yet. finished with a thousand yards. He was so good. Here's he here's so what good. I would. Here's what I'm praying for. 
Uh, we know Elijah Mitchell had the little health mishaps at the the the, the, the not the rookie mini camp, but the, the you know when the team got together a little bit early in OTAs and things like that. Uh, we know he was nursing something on the sideline. It wasn't a bad injury, but he 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 was he was he wasn't utilized. But my point is, what we witnessed last year, we had a taste. Like it was a little taste. It was Christian McCaffrey first half. It was Elijah Mitchell the second half. When Elijah Mitchell played last year, John, I swear it looked like he was averaging eleven yards a carry. Yo. Like it, like he just came in and it was just a burst, and the defenses were so worn out he could get through them holes like it was nothing. And I felt like he was getting eleven yards a pop. That was that Chargers game, which Chargers are a damn good football team. Chris McCaffrey first half, we didn't even see Elijah Mitchell till the second half. He comes out eighteen rush attempts, eighty nine yards. Whew. that was fun, man. That was fun. And I, I'll say this, the lowest point of the season for me was that Seahawks game week two. Trey Lance snaps his ankle in half. The very next play, Elijah Mitchell got his injury that knocked him out for two months. Back-to-back -back plays, man. I freaking hate Seattle. Not right. that it was their fault or they did dirty. <laughs> they did not. I just Look, hate them. Looking at these rooms, looking at these stables, we got to rank them. Okay. Want we'll to start at the bottom? We start at the bottom till we get to the top because now we're here. Rams, I, mean, I don't think I, I just I don't value what they have there. Um yeah. So I'd go Rams four, Cardinals three. I think Connor, I'd take James Connor and you know his touchdown scoring, big play ability over Cam Akers and his whatever. Yeah. And so, but there's a huge gap. You know, we started off before these rankings. There's two good ones, there's two bad ones. Whatever order you got, three and four, I don't really care. They both suck. Cardinals three, Rams four for me. I now, I, what do you got? One two. I want you to do the other half. So I like the I like the talent in Seattle. I think they have a young, talented, uh, a roster, a young, talented stable, but it's unproven. Um, but Kenneth Walker the third, I think, is going to be a, a a top premier running back in the league at some point. If if, if he can find ways to stay healthy, he's going to be that guy. Uh, Zach Charbonnet gives them promise. He he also extends the life of a Kenneth Walker. And then they have their they have their savvy vet in DJ Dallas. I got ran, I got the the Seahawks two, and I have the Niners one because there's not a better running back stable. It might not be a better running back stable in the league it's better than the 49ers. The 49ers Rush Podcast.